Hello, and welcome to Sophie and Co. Me, Sophie Shevardnadze. Hungary is vowed to fight for the transparency of foreign-backed groups working in a country has been met by a disapproval in Brussels. An outspoken critic of EU policies, Budapest is refusing to toe the line on refugees, ties with Russia and other issues. Can Hungary continue to put its own interests before Europe's? Well, Hungary's Foreign Minister Peter Sijartu is with me today to discuss this. The Hungarian government isn't shying away from confronting EU leaders after Brussels stepped up regulations, imposed refugee quotas and hurtful sanctions. For years, it has been a skeptical voice on European matters. But now, with America's new president promising to stay off the liberal course, will the ruling conservatives in Budapest be emboldened? Can the rise of alternative parties across Europe prop up Hungary's voice in the Union? And what kind of transformation can these new voices offer? Peter Sijardo, Hungary's Foreign and Trade Minister, it's great to have you here on our program. Welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. So we'll start from the latest. Budapest has vowed to sweep out any foreign NGOs funded by American billionaire source. I know that he nowadays funds more than 60 uh, groups like that. How dangerous are those organizations for your country? Well, actually, there's a um, very unfair and unjust approach um, being spread, actually, which uh, tries to say that uh, it is really the NGOs which represent the people of a given country which is a very dangerous, dangerous approach because it's not true. There have never been any elections uh, taken place where NGOs would have run. So there were no people uh, voting for, I want this NGO to represent me or I want that NGO to represent me. People vote on politicians, on political parties. So it's the parliament and it is the government which uh, represent uh, the people of, of given countries. So actually, we think that, uh, that this approach that NGOs would represent the society is very dangerous, number one. Number two, um, you know, there's a, there's a very clear um, and fair, by the way, demand towards politics uh, to be transparent. Uh, and I think that uh, it's not only politics which should be transparent, but, but all um, organizations which uh, have an impact uh, on public affairs on, uh, on political or social issues must be transparent as well because the people have a right to know uh, whom these NGOs, whom these organizations actually represent. So that's why we want to say that uh, if uh, there are NGOs in the country which are um, financed uh, by foreign citizens, by other countries, uh, by other governments, horrible uh, dictu. Uh, then uh, it, should be, it should be known to the people. But who are these local groups? I mean, you must have some knowledge to be so worried and to want to close them down. Who do, who, who do, who do they represent? Because Soros says he will continue working with local groups despite government's opposition. Well, actually, what we say is that they have to be transparent. People have to know uh, that if there are NGOs which would like to influence their opinion, their approach, their understanding towards politics, then these people have to know uh, whom these uh, NGOs um, represent. So that's who are that's they? what we want to know. The little groups that. Well, actually, we do know that, uh, that George Soros founds or finances a, a lot of organizations in Hungary. He has a very clear, um, let's say, um, uh, attempt or a very clear interest because he has already um, announced it and spoke about this very openly that he would like this government uh, to fail. He would like to kind of fire this government because he doesn't like our approach, doesn't like our policies. But I mean, it's not George Soros who has to make a decision what government leads Hungary, it's the Hungarian people. So actually, we find it uh, uh, very anti democratic if someone from abroad uh, would like to influence Hungarian voters uh, whom to vote for. But when George Soros says more than ever he's going to cooperate with the small groups, um, that in a way means that he's going to go against government's will. How is that going to play out? Well, actually, um, um, he has a very clear intention. That's, uh, that's uh, definitely uh, true. But, um, but I think uh, it's an obvious right of a country, obvious right of a government to protect the country from uh, external influence. This is what we have heard a lot from US in the last months, that uh, external influence is so dangerous. Uh, when, it, uh, when, when another country would like to influence political uh, procedures of another country. So I think uh, then it's, it's, it's a good reason that we say that if this is American position, that it can be our position as well. That if uh, factors 
people, persons, businessmen of another country would like to influence political procedures in another country, uh, from that we have to protect ourselves. But, but abbreviation NGO stands for non-governmental organizations. And in many cases, it turns out that, that maybe uh, letter N is not appropriate there, because many times other governments or other organizations which are affiliated to other governments actually fund these kind of organizations. As, as, sorry, as George Soros had a very clear um, and tight cooperation with, uh, with Democrats, with, uh, with the Clinton family, and uh, he, he clearly had a uh, strong influence on US foreign policy. He, he clearly had uh, a strong influence on, on the policy of the of Clinton family. So uh, actually, I don't think that NGO uh, means, uh, um, means, I mean, NGO is, is the right abbreviation in this regard, because so I mean, considering like them non-governmental is too much. preventive measure more than anything, right? Because you feel like these organizations can really influence your country's foreign policy. No, I, Am I, I understand yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, actually, uh, these NGOs can, from externally, can influence an internal uh, life, social, political life of our country. And if this is the case, then we have to know who they are. American incoming President Donald Trump has been also a very uh, vocal critic of Soros and his NGOs around the globe. Do you feel like with him in the office it's going to be easier for Hungary to get rid of this uh, Soros Foundation in your country? So now we have a hope that this political relationship will um, improve. And as uh, our position regarding migration, our position regarding the role of foreign policy is pretty similar with Donald Trump, we have a good hope that this political relationship will improve. We're going to talk about U.S.-Hungary relationship in just a bit, just to finish with Soros. Uh, your party has also said that Soros-funded NGOs is helping bring to Hungary illegal immigrants. How is he doing that and why would Soros need so many immigrants in Hungary? Well, what I understand um, uh, from my colleagues, since I don't supervise uh, intelligence agencies, is that, um, that there were organizations which helped uh, illegal migrants to find ways um, uh, to Hungary, uh, to find where they could violate uh, our border, to, to find um, out uh, how to apply for, uh, for asylum uh, status. And, uh, and these reports have said that, um, that um, George Soros was in the background for, for these organizations. So what's the um, reasoning behind it? Why would he want all these illegal immigrants? Well, since I'm not him, I cannot tell you that. I just can tell you what I have heard. You know, we are bordered with, um, uh, from the south, uh, we are bordered with peaceful countries, Croatia, uh, Serbia, from where migrants have entered uh, Hungary, uh, like 400,000 people in 2015. I mean, how can someone be considered as a refugee in Hungary who comes from Serbia or comes from Croatia to Hungary? I mean, there's no war in Croatia, no war in Serbia. So I think that these people might not be considered as, as refugees. They might be considered as refugees in the neighboring country where they uh, escape from if there's a war there. But, but definitely not in Serbia, Hungary, Croatia, Macedonia. So. Uh, why, um, uh, why European Union, um, um, I mean, carries out this open door policy? Um, you should ask the high ranking officials in Brussels. What I know is that it's a bad policy. It's harming European Union. It's dangerous because uh, this uh, policy of open borders actually undermines security uh, and safety in Europe. Currently, uh, we are ex uh, experiencing a threat of terror more serious than ever uh, uh, in Europe. Um, one point, um, even more, more than 1.5 million illegal migrants enter the territory of European Union without knowing who they are. And my question, our question was whether this fact gives the opportunity for terrorist organizations to send their terrorists to Europe or not. But if you speak like this, you're going to be attacked immediately in, in Western European media saying that you say that uh, migration equals terrorism, which we never say. But we say that yes, it, this uncontrolled and unregulated massive influx of migrants gave the opportunity for terrorist organizations well, to I mean, send I their think, terrorists to like, you know. It can be homegrown, but my question is that if there is a massive influx of 1.5 million people without knowing who they are, with opening the green borders for them, please come on in, uh, without controlling them. <coughs> it turned out that yes, there have been uh, uh, double uh, societies or, or parallel societies uh, constructed. There are problems with integration of, uh, of former migrants. Uh, in Western European uh, societies, we have to speak about this uh, this uh, openly. We think that uh, that the this um, solution between quotation marks based on quotas 
is, is totally, uh, uh, totally unimplementable. It's totally against common sense. We have to be able to protect ourselves. We have to be able to make a decision whom we let enter the territory of our country and whom we do not let.